Yo, what's up everyone? Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to the next example. So if y is equal to two to the power of negative x squared, we gotta answer these four questions about it. So part A, we gotta express y as f of g in two different ways. So remember, f of g is f of g of x, like that. So how can we express f of x? and g of x, so f of g of x ends up giving us this. Well, a simple way is we could let g of x be negative x squared, and then f of x would be 2 to the power of x. So that's a one way, because notice that then f of g of x would be f of negative x squared. We would plug in this expression for this x value, and we would end up with that right there. Another way to do this would be, um, we got f of x here, we got g of x. We can let, um, we can let uh, g of x, let's say, be negative x squared. We can add like a number here even. We could do negative x squared plus three. So we would end up with f of x being two to the power of x minus three, right? Which would uh, take that plus three away because f of g of x in this case, we'd have two to the power, we would plug in this whole expression for x, negative x squared plus three, and then we'd be subtracting three. Those would cancel out, we would be left with two to the power of negative x squared. So that is, um, is another way. Another way, actually I just thought of this, this would be pretty simple is if we let f of x be two to the power of negative x, g of x would just have to be x squared. So we'd be plugging in x squared for this x value. That would be in brackets, so we'd end up with two to the power of negative x squared. Very similar to this, but instead the negative we put over here instead of over there. Okay, so that's another possibility. So that's how we can express y as f of g of x or f of x and g of x are these different possibilities here. Now, part b, we have to express y as f of g of h in two different ways. So now we have to express it in terms of three functions. So f of g of h, that's the same as f of g of h of x. Okay, so this one I think is gonna be a little bit trickier. So let's try to think of some possibilities here. Well, what if we let h of x be x, let g of x be negative x squared, and then f of x would be two to the power of x. That's one way. Okay, so notice if h of x is x, g of h of x, we'd plug in this x value for this x value, which would just give us negative x squared again and then f of g of h of x, f of negative x squared, we, we would plug in negative x squared for that x right there. So we'd end up with two to the power of negative x squared. So that's one way to do it. What would be another way here? Well, we can let, give me a sec here. Uh, we can let h of x, maybe be x squared. We could let g of x be negative x, and then f of x is two to the power of x again. Okay, so notice in this case, what's g of h of x gonna be? Well, we would plug in this x squared for this x here. So we'd end up with negative x squared, and then we'd plug in this expression for this x value, f of that expression would be two to the negative x squared. So that is another possibility. Okay, for part B. So with three functions, it's a little tougher. You've got to uh, first start with uh, finding an expression for g of h of x, and then making sure that when you take that expression and plug it in for the x value in f, whatever you state f to be, you get that original expression as well. Now part C is asking what is the uh, domain of this function? Well notice x can be anything. Notice x can be negative, right? X could be zero and x could be positive. We know that two to the power of x 
What's the domain for this? Domain is just x e r, right? 2 to the power of x, the way that looks, is like that. So we could plug in anything for this x value. It could be negative, 0, or positive. So if it's negative x squared, there's no restriction here, right? So x can be anything the whole time. Okay, so the domain in this case, what is the domain? So part C, it would be uh, domain is XCR. Or in interval notation, we say X is an element from negative infinity to positive infinity, like that. And then part D, they're asking is Y even, odd, or neither? So what we got to do, we know F of X is 2 to the power of negative x squared. So what's f of negative x going to be? Well, we would plug in negative x for this x value, and then square that. And then notice that negative x squared, I'm going to just work with this portion here in square brackets. That's going to be, there's like a negative 1 here. That's like negative 1 squared times x squared, which would be positive 1 x squared, which is just x squared. So negative x squared is equal to x squared. So this square bracket is just x squared, so we'd have 2 to the negative x squared. And notice that that is the original function, f of x. So in this case, notice that f of negative x equals f of x. And when that happens, we know that the function is even. And graphically, that means that it is symmetrical about the y-axis. Remember, an even function is symmetrical, uh, symmetrical about the y-axis. So the way it actually looks, you don't have to worry too much about knowing how it looks. But if you're interested, if you were to take this and plug it into Desmos, it would look something like that. Sorry, that doesn't look symmetrical at all. It would look like that. Right, symmetrical about that y-axis. And this point here would be 0 and 1. Okay, and then all of the y-values besides this one would be less than 1. There'd be that horizontal asymptote on both sides at y is equal to 0. So notice that's a symmetric function. Okay, so this here is an even function.